Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm continuing the construction of Mirror Around the Moon. This is all done during live streams and this represents one stream which was about four hours long. And we have so far built, uh, put together the Mirror Core module, Kvant 1 and Kvant 2. So this is the Crystal module and it is being launched by what I normally call an Energia with uh, upper stage uh, though you could call it a Vulcan, a Soviet Vulcan rocket with just four boosters, either way. Um, they were variants of each other. So here go the four boosters. They do separate in pairs first before separating from each other. And here's the core stage with four of the RD-0120 engines, which are basically the Soviet version of the space shuttle main engines. And very similar in stats. And here we go with the upper stage that makes it somewhat different from a normal Energia. And this is an RD-57. Somebody noted that the RD-57 is normally associated with the Smirch stage. That is true. However, this is called the Vesuvius stage. It is larger physically than the Smirch stage. So just a note, there are two possible upper stages for the Vulcan rocket in this particular pack. With uh, It's Deku's Energia pack. So we're continuing on to the moon here. There's the lunar burn after I separated off the fairings and got the solar panels out. And that's shut down. So we have a decent lunar trajectory. We make a... Well, okay, we didn't have a decent lunar trajectory, which is why we're doing this correction. That's because of complications launching out of Baikonur, which is where uh, the Soviet space center is. And now we are capturing around the moon. And... Actually, this uh, crystal module would have been the last module actually launched to mirror around the Earth uh, by the Soviet Union. It was launched in on May 31st, 1990. However, the Soviet Union then fell, and so the next module that arrives after this is Spectre, but that's May 20th, 1995, so there's a five-year gap because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. So we separated off the Briz stage, and now we are docking the module on its own. I had added solar panels to this module, even though it I don't think it had... Uh, no, it did have them, but they remain folded while docked. So they, it did have the solar panels, but they don't use the solar panels because of where it's docking. You can see it would interfere with the mirror core's own solar panels. So it's just folded in. But of course it needed them for power en route, especially to the moon. This is the interior. Somebody asked me to take a look at the interior. I think this interior might have been done by... Bobcat back in the day? I'm not sure. Well, maybe it is. Uh, I'll have to ask Raider Nick about that. Anyway, onward, we launched the next module, which is Spectre. So there would have been a five year gap between the two modules. Uh, all of these modules around Earth would have been launched by a Proton rocket, which is much smaller than this rocket, but we're trying to get to the moon, so we're launching with the bigger rocket. And. Yep, this module was a power module, so it actually had four soul panels instead of the usual two. And it also was living quarters for American astronauts when they visited. Uh, well, at least until a progress crashed into it, and then it was unusable because it was basically in vacuum. <laughs> so the progress uh, resupply vessel collided with it in 1997, so I don't think... American astronauts got that much use out of it, uh, but it, it was mainly a power module anyway, so it wasn't specific, but it was part of the... Uh, they only were able to fund this af after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they were only able to fund this module uh, because of the collaboration, the Mir shuttle collaboration with NASA. So anyway, here we go, uh, making the burn for the moon after having made orbit. The setup for the rockets is exactly the same. For the most part, this Mir space station was constructed in three streams, which made it a lot easier, easier than my construction of the ISS, mainly because the modules all have their own propulsion, so you don't have to like use canned arm or tugs or anything like that. They can dock themselves for the most part, though I'm using Briz stages to get them into orbit around the moon. Briz stages are fairly handy for lunar things in general. So just a reminder of the weird contortions we have to do with our orbit because I'm placing Mir into a polar orbit. 
so it's a little bit hard to get to. So we have to make this inclination correction. You can see the inclination down there at the bottom of the screen going up, 62 and onward. And here we are arriving at Mir as it is currently constructed. Uh, 86 degree inclination. Separating off the Briz stage. There's plenty of fuel left in the Briz. Um, but we didn't really have anywhere to put it. And we couldn't just collect those stages. I needed the docking port free. It docks on that end. So, here we are approaching the station. You can see Earth in the background. I thought that was a nice shot. And lining up with the docking port. Currently, the two additional solar panels are folded up. And it's only the main two that are out. This module actually gives Mir a somewhat distinctive appearance because the two additional solar panels are at an, at an angle. And so when we do extend them, you'll see what I mean. It's a sort of peculiar arrangement. And we are docked. And here... Can't really see it because... They're, it, yeah, they're at an angle because of the surface there. It's interesting. Next module is the docking module for the shuttle. And it was actually carried by the Space Shuttle Atlantis to Mir. But I had two tourists who wanted to go... Well, okay. One tourist who wanted to go to Mir. That's Barafel there. And one who I forced to tag along, Raider Nick, as his pilot. And so Barafel uh, got commissioned as an engineer here. Raider Nick... Uh, got reincarnated after meeting his demise previously. So off they go to Mir with the docking module. So they've got sort of a makeshift uh, Soyuz that we demonstrated would not survive coming back, but it can get to the moon anyway. Coming back it'd be too toasty it seems based on our test and Raider Nick's previous fate. Anyway, the docking module on its own could have been launched to the moon on Proton with a Block D, I think. But because I had these two to send over there, I decided to put things together and at one go and use the heavier rocket that we were already using. So here we are making orbit again. It's an interesting fact that with all of these, I never felt a need to slap on the additional boosters, making Vulcan the full Vulcan with eight boosters. Really, the four were enough, and probably overdoing it as it is. We leave some fuel in the Vesuvius stage. Okay, so here we go, making orbit around the moon. But there will be complications here, I discover. As we approach the station, after doing a series of burns. Actually, uh, I think we missed the mark here, as far as matching velocities. I had to re-rendezvous, but I won't bore you with that. The problem is, we don't have the RCS thrusters on the orbital module functioning. There's not fuel cross-feed. The fuel from the bridge stage is not getting up to them. And so I realized that we wouldn't be able to rendezvous, we won't be able to dock like that safely. We need those functioning. And so I had Barafel uh, go outside, do an EVA, and grab the RCS ports and move them so that we could use them. You can see the ones on the KIS container to Barafel's right are functional, but the ones on the orbital module to Barafel's left are not because the fuel is not getting through the heat shield and the heat shield on, at the bottom of the descent module did not seem to have fuel crossfeed uh, so, or toggleable fuel crossfeed. So I don't know what that was all about, but I moved those so that we could do it. There was a little bit of pause there, and now they're puffing away like they're supposed to. So no harm done there. It seems like we can manage that with this additional EVA. However, when I tried to get Barefell back in, and uh, there's the crew hatch right there, for some reason, it said that I couldn't, I guess the orbital module only has capacity for one. Can board a full module, it thought it was a full module. So I had Raider Nick move back. So transfer. And 
For some reason, the descent module seemed to be blocked, or at least in orange, so I sent Ravenick into the docking module, and then tried to get Barafel into the orbital module, but that didn't work still. So, I just had Barafel EV all the way to Mir. <laughs> it seemed like the thing to do at that point. I was unclear about why that was happening, and this seemed like the best solution since he was already out. So, clambered onto that position, and in he goes. I transferred fuel from the toroidal tank around. So, this the bridge stage is actually a smaller tank, and then there's a toroidal tank around it that we're gonna separate here. So, I just moved the fuel off of it. I don't know exactly why I decided to dump this. Maybe it was to make it easier to turn and everything. It is spare at this point. So, we're now trimmer and in theory making it easier to dock. However, my depth perception failed me at this point, as you'll see here. I didn't realize how close I was to that one solar panel, and I knocked it. Which is almost like progress knocking into Spectre, but not quite. But we had our own sort of incident. Thankfully, and not one that caused structural integrity to be an issue. But I decided to go instead to the Kvant 1 docking port instead of the one I was originally going to use. I think it was better to dock at Kvant 1 docking port anyway. The problem here is we have to get that um, docking module off of the makeshift Soyuz-ish thing that we have in front. And the bridge stage doesn't have thrusters in the right location for that. So either we do an EVA with Barefell to move the thrusters to the bridge stage, or we do something else. But I ended up leaving that for the next stream. At this point, this is where I left things and ran out of time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.